first moment I said to myself, I am Jesus. Well, it, it wasn't really like that. Um, it was more to do, it was more of a gradual process over a period of about one week. I started having a whole series of pretty strong memories of my first century life, as well as my memories about spirit, my spirit life. Well, no one's ever claimed to be the son of God before, so he must be telling the truth. Where do I sign up? AJ Miller and his partner Mary Luck call this 16 hectare property near Kingaroy in Queensland, two hours west of Brisbane, headquarters for the Divine Truth Movement, a Christian-based organisation that sees AJ as its spiritual leader, as he is the reincarnation of Jesus Christ, and Mary is, of course, Mary Magdalene. The pair who bought the property in 2007 have been recruiting followers from across Australia. All right, first thing before I get started on this, guys, i got to give him a little bit of credit, uh, the whole Mary Magdalene thing. All right, so how else, as Jesus, do you explain the fact that you divorced your wife to be with this other chick who you claim to be Mary Magdalene? It, it's, inc it's brilliant to me, because now he's got a way for Jesus to get his dick wet. <laughs> he had to make something up. So he's like, oh, yes, yeah, Mary Magdalene, and, and we're soulmates, so we got to be together. Once I realized that Jesus had to dump the old wife, get the new one, <laughs> knocking boots. And he, it's brilliant. So how are these two able to run around Australia and get new uh, converts? Well, let's look into that. Our search lands us at a website called alphadynamic.com. And these people offer like subliminal seminars on, you know, quit smoking, lose weight, gain confidence, improve memory, and much more. And it's one of these things, it's like a self-help seminar. It's, uh, they offer it for free, you know, but then it ends up costing you $600 for this four-day seminar. And then, lo and behold, on the last day of the seminar, they bring in a special guest. And guess who it is? It's my pleasure to uh, introduce our presenters this afternoon. We have Natalie from the United Kingdom, who has, uh, well, where do I start? Natalie is a, is a world famous channeler, and uh, she's going to be doing some amazing channeling work this afternoon. And uh, we're going to welcome Natalie in a moment. Uh, AJ is, is the presenter for this afternoon, and he travels around the world. I've been interested in uh, spirituality and personal development for uh, more than 20 years and I've found that the information that AJ is going to share with you this afternoon is some of the most profound and empowering information that I think you'll ever come across in your entire life. So let's give uh, Natalie and uh, AJ a very warm and enthusiastic Sunshine Coast welcome. Okay, so Jesus comes in, throws some woo-woo stuff around for a little while, and then he drops the bomb on the crowd. Is that okay for the moment? Yeah. Yep. All right. All right. So my mum said to me, as soon as you see that smile that I just gave you, <laughs> the, next, the next thing that comes is going to be challenging. <laughs> So the first thing that I'm going to say is truth, truth is essential in every transaction. Do you agree? You think of all the tr transactions you've had with people. How many times have you been hurt, if we can use that term, from a time when they were dishonest with you? Say in a business dealing or in a husband and wife type situation, a partnership. When they're dishonest, there is a feeling of... a feeling that arises within, isn't it? All right, so... The first thing I like to do is be truthful with you. And so I want to talk to you about how I know all the things that I'm going to tell you in this session. And how I know is that I've experienced all of these things that I'm going to talk about with you. 
and I remember them as well. So you'll be able to ask questions as much as you wish, and I'll answer them to the best of my ability, about anything that you desire. Now, if I don't want to answer a question, there'll often be a reason why behind it, and I'll tell you, and I'll be honest with you. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is that uh, the person I am is actually a person who lived on earth in the first century. And my name is Jesus. And I'm serious. Oh, there's lots of projections on the <laughs> So you got to wonder how many people he loses at this point in this talk. You know, I mean, how do you not get up and walk out of the damn room? Yeah, I, of course, I couldn't leave without asking a few questions myself. And I love his little qualifier. Uh, you can ask me anything you want, anything you desire. You can ask it of me, and I'll answer it, unless I don't want to. Because <laughs> he knows he's going to get busted on a few things, and he can't answer them. Which he, he does qualify in other talks where he says that you can't, you know, use a Bible, you know, verse against him or anything like that because he says the Bible has been uh, misrepresented over the years and it's not really how things are. He has the real truth, Bible's crap. And so, let's watch some more. So, what's the feelings that arise? I'm married. You're married? <laughs> All right, so it ain't even been 10 seconds since he got the Jesus thing out of his mouth and we already got some quack elsewhere in the room going, I'm married. <laughs> So watch how he handles this, because he can't have that, because he's the only one that's been reincarnated here, because he can't have somebody else uh, with any kind of knowledge. You must be. I'm just being honest, that's what, I don't know whether it was my mind or my soul, but I think you can call yourself Jesus, then I can call myself Mary. Okay, but what if I am Jesus? See, there's three possibilities, isn't there? One possibility is that I think I'm Jesus and I'm a nutcase. <laughs> That's a possibility, isn't it? That's the one mostly in all of your minds, right? <laughs> the next possibility is that I think that I'm Jesus and I'm deceitful. That's not so good, huh? And then the third possibility is I am Jesus. And that's the choice that you're going to have to make at some time in our discussion, perhaps. So he gives us the liar, lunatic, or lord theory, and we have to choose which one he is. I'm going with fucking crook. But in the end, I'm telling you that the reason why I can say what's coming, the next set of things I want to talk to you about, is because I've experienced them, and I am that person. All right, the audio from the crowd is kind of hard to hear in some spots, so I'm either going to step in and repeat the person's question for you or I'll do a subtitle or something along the way. So the first one is uh, somebody asking about all the other people through history who've claimed to be Jesus and here's his reply. I agree. There's actually about probably a, 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 probably a million or so people who think they're Jesus, right? And most of them are in asylums. <laughs> I agree with that too. But one of us has to be. <laughs> <laughs> no, not one of you has to be. 100% of you could be freaking wrong. None of you have to be. I can't believe this guy gets away with some of the crap that he says during this seminar. So, yes, but I'm talking about I am Yeshua ben Joseph, the son of <coughs> Joseph and Mary in the first century. So just to be clear, he specifies who he is, just so he, you know, nobody confuses the fact that he might be named Jesus, and he's just actually using the, he, using the name Jesus. He's actually Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Mary and Joseph, went to Bethlehem, born in a manger, all that crap. This is the guy. So you're saying you are the vibration of the person? No, I am the person. I'm not saying I'm the vibration of the person. I'm saying I am the soul of Jesus. I'm a half of the soul, by the way. Sorry? How do I know I am? <laughs> because I remember everything about my life. So do I speak Aramaic? It can be spoken. Not now, I can't, no. No, what happens is that as you work through your emotional state, and this is something we'll talk about, you, may, you have memories come back 
as you work through your emotions. So, uh, for example, if you think about your life, how many of you have had some kind of abusive childhood? Is there, I, I know it's a sensitive subject. So Jesus can't speak Aramaic, and what's his explanation for that? I have amnesia. <laughs> he can't remember everything from his past life. How do I know I have? <laughs> because I remember everything about my life. <laughs> so do I speak Aramaic? It can be spoken. Not now, I can't, no. No, what happens is that as you work through your emotional state, and this is something we'll talk about, you may, you have memories come back as you work through your emotions. So he goes off and starts derailing the question, you know, by starting to ask other people about childhood memories and stuff that they, you know, don't quite remember, but things come back to them, and it's a bunch of woo-woo crap. Uh, let me ask you a question, Jesus. Um, you're the Son of God. You're Jesus Christ. Um, so you know everything. On my desk here is an envelope. This envelope has been sitting on my desk for years. There's something written inside that envelope. And if you tell me what it is, we have grounds for further investigation. For years, nobody has been able to tell me what's in that envelope. No matter how good their psychic powers are supposed to be, if they're God, if they're the devil, it doesn't matter who they say they are, nobody can answer that damn question. So, let's see what else this moron's got. The truth is that I did perform many miracles. I healed sight of people who were blind. You know, I healed lame limbs of people instantly and all of those kind of things. And the so-called resurrections from the dead. Well, of course you can heal people. You're Jesus. Everybody who claims to be Jesus, a uh, prophet of Jesus, uh, it doesn't matter. They can all heal people. Except where's your evidence? Is it as good as all these other people, or is it just as bad, or what? Where's, where's the evidence for all this stuff? I want to see these people that you've raised from the dead. Where's the scientific verification of this? Wait a minute, didn't you say you could heal the blind? What the fuck is that on your face? If you can heal the blind, how come you can't heal your own freaking eyesight? You need glasses? You've got to be freaking kidding me. Jesus needs glasses. And what is this? You've got a microphone. You've got an old boom microphone like your freaking Britney Spears up on stage here, preaching to a, your small room of people. But yet, you know, 2,000 years ago, you can give a sermon to, on the mountain. Everybody can hear you fine. You don't need it then. Why do you need it now? You're a freaking clown. With Miller already preaching of an apocalypse next year, Wiltsdale outside King Arroy is the base chosen as God's safe place for a last stand. I will feed them with my truth. So in the end, all we have is another end-of-the-world prophesier claiming to be Jesus, and he needs your money. Send him money on his website. You can't send it to Jesus, though. You need to make your checks out to Alan Miller because that bank won't cash a check if you make your check out to Jesus. I mean, I have no reason to believe this guy any more than I do, say, Uriel. Join us in this solid journey past life histories of Ruth Norman, the present incarnation of Archangel Uriel. With the development of this infinite intelligence known as Uriel, the Earth has been seeded by great forces of light. On Earth, 500,000 years ago, in the civilization of Yu, she incarnated as the spiritual teacher Yuda. Uriel then incarnated as Poseid and founded the civilization of Atlantis. Uriel again served as a battery or a channel for these spiritual energies for the earth world as Bathsheba, wife of King David of Israel. In ancient Greece, Uriel returned, this time as Socrates, whose wisdom brought Greece into its golden age. In Israel, as Mary Magdalene, she again served as a polarity for Archangel Raphael, incarnated as Jesus of Nazareth. Uriel served many lifetimes as the Dalai Lama, high priest in the Tibetan mountains. As the wife of Muhammad, Uriel's incarnation as Hadijah served an important function to enable Muhammad to write the Quran. She was the symbol of beauty as Mumtaz Mahal and the inspiration for the great edifice known as the Taj Mahal. Uriel continued her work as King Arthur, whose round table brought a new era to England. Incarnated as Peter the Great, Uriel was the inspiration and motivating force for Russia's move forward to a great era of progress. This consciousness of Uriel is referred to as the healing archangel. Another manifestation of her psychic consciousness may be known as the spirit of beauty, goddess of love.
Uriel's present incarnation as Ruth Norman is a culmination of all the great works of these various past lives. Sorry, Jesus, but you're behind the power curve, because this bitch has been everybody but Ronald Reagan. <laughs>